Hello YouTube, this is Sam Gerens from CoralKnight.com. Today is Thursday the 16th of May 2019. Uh, for those of you who know what my plans are vis a -vis going to the States, uh, that's all booked, all set up and God willing I should be there in a few days. And um, I'm probably going to make a few videos while I'm there sharing some of my thoughts and impressions. I, I have to say I'm not expecting any any miracles? I mean, I grew up in the UK, which is basically a state, that, you know, a part of the United States, certainly culturally. But um, I just, I, I definitely want to have a look because I think that whatever happens worldwide starts it starts in America, um, and also I want to meet some uh, face to face some of the people who've been kind enough to support my work and um, to engage with it and so on. And there just really is no, uh, there's no substitute for for face to face meetings and. And um, that's something that I obviously promote through Meets Quarter Nights, and I, I wish to practice it myself. You know, we, it's very easy to get very atomized. Anyway, just the fact that I know that I'm going has um, imbued me with renewed vigor, and I, I'm really looking forward to it. But in this talk, um, which will probably be the last one before I go, but we'll see. I want to, I want to look at the question of uh, educating one's children in this system. And I, I, I want to look at some of the, the problems of it and how we, we're trying to solve this problem ourselves um, in, in our family. Um, I mean, I have a, I have a grown-up son, but I also have, you know, we live at home with our daughter who's six and a half. And, you know, we've, if you don't know my work, I mean, or my background my life has been quite uh, tumultuous since I decided to give up you know, working in the mainstream and to commit myself to a, a genuine study of the Quran and sharing my results and in a way my work really uh, challenges what I call brand Islam on the basis of the book the Quran which it claims is its foundational scripture and I, I do believe the Quran I accept it as at, at its own estimate of itself I just find that estimate utterly incompatible with with this religion um, however that's not the, the focus of this talk but what's happened and quite naturally is that if you do what I do uh, you, you know you're, you're, you, I worked in the corporate world in various capacities funnily enough when people they don't want to hire you anymore if there's a choice between hiring you and somebody who's not likely to have uh, a, a letter bomb de uh, delivered to his place of work <laughs> then surprisingly they're going to take the second guy all that to say that we have lived in a lot of different places and we've moved around an awful lot my work um, which is the first fruits of which is the Quran a complete revelation which you may download for free from Quranites.com was really written um, in in conditions of extremists in a lot of ways um, in, in different countries on the fly almost you know, we lived in we lived in Russia Spain uh, England Spain in Georgia for a year and and now back here and one of the reasons I mean it's not the only reason but one of the reasons that we we left the UK is to do with fr frankly we don't trust the government. We don't trust the system there. It's um, what's happening with the children, the so-called child protection services, uh, children protection services. Uh, they're fundamentally kidnapping uh, children to order. And the UK is not the worst country. Uh, it's happening in Scandinavian countries. Um, it's There's an epidemic of it. And please don't take my word for it. If you don't know about this, just go online, use Google, look up government stealing children and hit enter and you know spend the next three or four hours getting very depressed this is the reality in which we live now um, for better or for worse i have a background one of my backgrounds one of my educational backgrounds is in uh, russian language and literature and as a component of that we studied what was laughingly called russian history when i was at university i say laughingly called russian history because uh, russian history is uh, if you've ever studied it in, in academia um it's it, the it's an exercise in not seeing the elephant in the room and the elephant in the room is basically russian jewish influence uh, you, which is huge 
You know, it wasn't a Russian revolution. There were very few Russians involved in the Russian revolution. The Russian revolution was a Jewish coup, which resulted in the genocide of tens of millions of Russians and Ukrainians and all kinds of other people. This is this isn't anti-Semitism. It's just historical fact. And um, as I, it was one of the reasons why I decided to get out of university as quickly as possible. Well, I mean, after I got my degree and not go back was because I realised this is it's only an indoctrination process. There's nothing educational about it. It's just it's really obedience training and, and not much more. While I'm on the subject, I mean, my, as, it, as it happens, my degree was actually in two things. It was in Russian language and literature. And what was interesting was the division between the two, because there isn't much you can do to politicize a verb conjugation. A verb conjugation just is what it is. You know, a verb conjugation doesn't deny the Holocaust or have a view on transsexualism or something. It cannot be politicized. There's nothing you can do to a verb conjugation to make it uh, convey... Um, well, I suppose that's not quite true now but with, with this uh, ridiculous new set of pronouns and stuff they've got. But, you know, in my day, they hadn't got round to that yet. So when you were studying grammar, for example, or vocabulary, especially grammar, uh, it's like just it just describes what is. And there's an awful lot of logic involved in it. And uh, it, it was very useful, but com- when I compare that to the way the literature component was was taught, uh, these things were worlds apart. The literature component was basically a vehicle for shoehorning into the mind a set of uh, a very a very socialistic left wing, um, f- I would say Frankfurt School cultural Marxist worldview. Um, and and training the administrators and I don't know bureaucrats and business people of tomorrow in basically responding I think responding on cue to particular demands um, and and certainly making everybody obey and uh, chase the carrot that seemed to be that seemed basically and to learn useless things and not really think about them that and get you into debt. That seemed to be the entire point of university. And I remember, I understood that when I was there. And um, so what's happened to universities is that they've become, if, you're, if you've got a brain, if you've got a functioning brain and you're, you're not just looking for social um, acceptance and confirmation that your neuroses have got some basis in reality and you, you, you're owed some huge reparations. I mean, if you actually have a, a functioning mind and you wish to use it and pursue truth, no matter where it leads you, uh, you've got nothing to do at university anymore. They're, they've become really just indoctrination centers and, um, and debt encumbrances. So all that to say, you know, if you're bringing up children, whereas when I when I was a lad, when I was growing up in the early 1970s and through the 70s and so on, it wasn't that bad. I mean, what was happening back then was that the the madness that we now have with the social justice warriors and you know the red haired women and all of these you know complete nutbags who in a normal society would just be marginalised, ignored, or just people would have just mockingly laughed at them, you know, wrap their arm around their shoulder and say, "Get over it, love," and you know we would, we would things would have carried on. Now these you know these crazy people ha- are ruling the asylum, and so rather than complain about it, you really have to react to it, to react to it sensibly. There are people like uh, Jordan Peterson and um, various other people who are trying to operate within the system. I mean, I don't know what one's view about Jordan Peterson is, but you know, to some extent, at least, he seems to be he seems to be sort of uh, acquiring the mantle of the of the, the of, of the of the Messiah. But my own view is is that nothing short of war. <laughs> is going to clean this out. It would too far gone. The whole system is corrupt from the inside. It's rotten from the inside. And, you know, just sort of moving the deck chairs around the Titanic isn't going to change anything. So that's the reality. And unlike the sort of social justice warriors and, and the, the libtards and all the rest of it, people on, I suppose, on the political right, such as myself, um, we embrace reality. We deal with it as it actually is rather than trying to impose the sort of Peter Pan um, dictatorship upon everything or the, where everything must be how we wish it was. Well, wishing is okay, but it's largely a waste of time. So the reality is, is that you can't trust 
the education system because it's been eaten out from the inside. It is now purely an an indoctrination system that is designed to suck all your money out of you and turn you into an unthinking moron, um, an unthinking moron with a very high set of um, feelings of entitlement and and a, a very low threshold for actual truth. If if you're still listening, you know what I'm talking about. So now let's look at you know strategies of dealing with this reality. So in our household, and we are believers. We believe in God. We believe in you know, the last day, and we don't want our child indoctrinated into a whole lot of stuff that is unproven. It's not to do with you know we're anti-science. We're not anti-science. I'm actually pro-science. I'm pro-real science. I'm pro-things that can be proven. And I'm not even against things being presented which can't be proven, as long as they're presented as things which can't be proven. You know, we, we can't prove this, but some people think this and some people think that. That's fine. So it's not that I have some sort of inbuilt um, resistance to particular ideas. It's not like that at all. However, indoctrination, wholesale indoctrination, which is what is happening now in British schools, and I'm sure in American schools and everywhere else, is it's it's now not merely useless, it's pernicious and a complete waste of time. So how do you deal with it? What do you do? So, um, well, I mean, if you want to look at the results of it, just look around you. Um, you have the young people of today, not all, there are some exceptions and there are some exceptional young people. However, I would s- the objective data is that people are getting stupider. Um, and I'm sure anybody listening to this and has been out, out of the house in the last five or ten years will, you know, will, will bear that out. They, they are objectively becoming dumber. And also what's happening is that people who aren't stupid, you're using more of your, uh, as it were, available random access memory or your available processing power and the, the, the difference between you and most people you're meeting to to uh, c- sort of compute and to um, assist you in dealing with their stupidity you know you have to you, you what you spend your time rather than spending your time around very intelligent people who are challenging your intelligence in an active way you're spending more and more time around really really stupid people and the only way they challenge your intelligence is that you have to sort of you have to account for the next stupid thing they're going to do see it anticipate it and deal with it but at least at least the intelligence is getting some sort of uh, some sort of you know play even if it is not in exactly the way you might like Anyway, all that to say that, you know, in the school system now, I'm just checking my notes, um, we have what is objectively fake science. It it, it is fake. And my definition of fake is something that cannot be proven. The true scientific method is a wonderful thing, um, but that's not what's being presented in school. What's being presented in schools now largely is a mythology. It's just a mythology, and it's an anti-God mythology, and an anti-God mythology that cannot be proven. And children require adults to to guide them. Childhood is the is the time when children are receiving their their mythos, their foundational story, which is going to be the the program that they're going to access throughout their life, largely. And to outsource that to people who think that transsexualism and um, sodomy and soon paedophilia are, are all fine, um, in, in, in my view, is not acceptable. And I don't care if everybody else in the world thinks it is acceptable, it's not acceptable to me. So we have that aspect, which is one reason why it's really impossible for us to send our child to a school. You've got the dumbed down basics. I mean, the, if you look at if you look up online um, an exam paper for a fourteen year olds from the from nineteen hundred, we would all struggle to do that. These, if you look, just pick up Wuthering Heights or you know Great Expectations or a, a novel from the ninth uh, the nineteenth century, I mean, a lot of people. I mean, I can read it, but a lot of people can't. If you pick up Peter Pan. Peter Pan, Jane Barry, written, I think it was about 1912, something like that. Most most single language English children, I mean children, English speaking children who don't have a second language, that English is their only language, of nine, ten years old, can't they can't read that book. In fact, their parents can't read that book. It's it's quite horrific what's happening. And 
just because it looks like a school, it calls itself a school. These places are now no longer schools. There are other reasons why sending one school, one's child to what's called a school that is dangerous um, is iPhones, smartphones, fundamentally. What do you think they're all doing at lunchtime? They're not playing. They're not having any kind of interaction with each other. They're sitting there training themselves to become the new generation of stupid. I mean, look at the parents walking around with their iPhones. I, I call them iPhone orphans, these poor children whose parents just spend their entire lives looking at a screen. And the access to pornography, violent stuff, all of this, it's an open sewer. And schools don't ban them. Schools allow, not all schools, but most schools allow children to bring these things into the school. And if you don't want that, you know, what are you going to do? Added to that, you've got deviant teachers. I mean, when we were in the UK, we went to, uh, our daughter went to a nursery. Um, the deputy headmaster of the school, it wasn't of the nursery, but the nursery was attached to the school, was it? was an obvious homosexual. Um, quite, I, I, I grilled him quite cautiously because you have to be very cautious in how you talk now to people because you can just be accused of a hate crime uh, because you don't want your, you know, your child sodomized or abused. Um, and basically there is a sex, edu what they call sex education, it's sex indoctrination. What, small children don't need to know about fellatial and anal sex. They actually something they don't need. And it's certainly, if, if there is a requirement for them to understand these particular activities, school isn't the place for this. So you have to ask yourself, why are the schools doing this? Are we, the answer is clear. The answer is, is that government is using school, not satisfied with merely the entire education system, um, well, being operating through the, what's actually the entertainment system. That level of indoctrination isn't enough. They're going to do it to you all day long from the ages of five to 16 at the very least. And they're creating a generation of people who are obedient, unable to think, and sexually deviant and basically dumbed down to a point where they can't operate, which is exactly what the ruling elite wants. I can't stop this system doing what it's going to do. As far as I'm concerned, it's finished. I think we're past the point of no return. People are too stupid. The system is too corrupt. It's the, what's happened is the whole world has been turned into the Weimar Republic and worse. And I, I just don't think it's, you can't turn this around. You know, this, this can only be cleansed by fire. Um, on top of all of this, of course, we've got the in, the injections, inoculations, so-called, which are basically cauterizing people's ability to think. And if you look at the children, they're, 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 they're mutations. I mean, I, it pains me to say it, but they're, they're not the children of the 1970s. They're just not. They're, I mean, dumbed down doesn't quite do, doesn't do what's happening justice. So that's the scenario. If you're still with me, you understand what I'm talking about. Good. If you want to, you know, say I'm evil and terrible and so on. Well, yeah, actually, I don't really care very much. So what to do about it? This is really where I'm going with this. What we've done about it is um, we had to opt out of the system pretty much completely. And uh, because what's what day school is about, it's a collusion. You will let you screw up our children if you'll free us up to go and to be slaves in the system. That's basically the agreement. That's the unwritten agreement. You take our children off our hands so we can pay off our mortgages and we won't complain if you turn them into paedophiles. So, no, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but basically this is where it's going. Um, that's not acceptable to me. It's not acceptable. That's not a trade that I'm interested in. Um, what, so what are the alternatives? Well, one is teaching your children yourself. Now, it may be that that, uh, I mean, you will teach your children yourself whether you like it or not. That's going to be a part of it. And understanding that that's where children learn is in the home. You know, get that through your head first. That's the first bit, right? You teach your children in the way that they see how you talk to your wife, how you 
the way you keep house, you know, the amount of books you've got, what you spend your time doing. That's that's real teaching. That's what really happens. Teaching, sitting down with a, you know, a series of books, it's, it's a part of it, but it's possibly not even the main part of it, but it's, it is a part of it. As believers, uh, what we do in our house uh, is, is my daughter's got, she loves stories. And so she'll ask me, she'll say, you know, tell me a story about Musa. She means Musa because that's just often, actually because Musa is the most frequently mentioned um, prophet in the Quran. And so she associates Musa with these stories from the Quran. She doesn't need to learn Arabic at this point. She doesn't need to sit and read the Quran at this point. What she needs is somebody to tell her the stories. And that's what I do. I tell her the stories, you know, beginning with with uh, Musa in the land of Firaun, and then with his with his you know with his mother, and then this happened, and then that happened, and then that. and she knows the whole story, and she she can listen to it over and over and over again, and you can feed into this your narrative, the family narrative, the the family book, and so these stories are are familiar to her. They're hearing it. You know, she's hearing it from her from her father. She she sees how we live. This is this is education. You should see, I would say that you should see it in that way. Obviously, when you get to a point where you can read and so on and so forth, fine. But you know, just I w- I would counsel that sitting there and teaching children who are not Arabic speakers to read the Quran with no understanding, making sounds that mean nothing to them, just I I don't really see the point. I mean. That would be a good system if you really wanted to make people hate it, um, but I can't see that it's of any benefit myself. I mean, if you disagree, you disagree. That's fine. What we've done is, what you, is what is so important is trying to find like-minded people, and by like-minded people, um, for me, you know, where where we live, that doesn't mean Quran alone believing, etc., etc., etc. I'm looking for people who aren't morons who understand that the food is weaponized and poisoned and who understand that um, schools are indoctrination camps and who understand a few other bits and pieces. I'm happy with that. I'll go with that. And my wife has managed to uh, meet in the process of filtering through people. About We've got about three or four families now. And we together have hired a teacher to teach our children together and very cheaply and in that environment we control you know no child can bring a a phone uh, you know no no television none of this a whole set of none of this gmo food no no, no sweets so we dictate the the circumstances but to to do that you really need to to take responsibility and to think creatively there are lots of homeschooling programs and um, they're trying to close it down obviously everywhere because because uh, the government wants no child left behind uh, left behind <laughs> yeah it doesn't want any child able to think for itself that's that's what it really really boils down to so all that to say is i think the starting point with this is do some research go online and, and look around and see what's going on and if if nothing else if nothing else consider the fact that of of what they want to teach your children, that they want they want you to normalise transsexuality, homosexuality, sodomy to f- four, five year olds, six year olds. In this nursery, which my daughter attended in England, there was a, a book called for three year olds called My Two Daddies. How wonderful it was to get home and have two daddies, not just one. And you could sit on Daddy and whatever and Jack or John's knee, and he would stroke me and tell me how wonderful. The state is grooming your children and it's using your money to do it. And if you don't like it, it's going to call you a bigot. Now, I don't know about you, but I care about my children. So I, I th- we have to become uh, active and start to take responsibility and not look, in my opinion, to the, the broad masses to wake up because that ain't going to happen ever. Not not ever. It's not It's not happening. So the way I see it personally is a few people, you know, in little enclaves 
getting their education, you know, learning the trivium, able to think, able to work lo- through things logically, getting a, a spiritual and practical education. And then, when, um, you know, my own personal view is I, I'm an advocate of what I call the God Protocol, which is part of my broader work. But I have no way of knowing you know, when the hour will come. I mean, I can do my work, but I have no way of knowing. And if it's going to be another 100 years, 200 years, 1,000 years, whatever, then what's going to happen is a, a, a full societal collapse. There's no way around that. I mean, if you don't get that, you know, you're living in denial. Of course, that's going to happen. And what will then happen is that there, the, it will start again. And the people who will survive will be those who are bright enough and who have got the tools. Um, you know, obviously, society will dip into a, into a sort of new dark ages, um, and everywhere will look like you know colonial Africa for a while. There'll be these buildings around that were built by really intelligent people, and but the people who live there won't know, you know, won't be able to fix them or understand how they work. And then after a certain time, you know, there'll be these sort of clusters of intelligent people who've bred for intelligence and and kept and kept. Um, what I call paper assets, you know, look behind me, you know, get those books, get the Aristotle, get the philosophers, get those things now, because you can build a civilization on that, get the Quran, understand these things, learn the languages of it and teach your children. And you'll be ready, you know, if, if there is a new cycle, you'll be ready to, to be able to contribute to that. But, you know, looking to the system, and certainly in my opinion, you know, if you're at the university and having a wonderful time, well, good for you. I thought university was a complete waste of time. I thought it was absolute uh, scam. It's just a scam. It's, that's all it is. Um, and not somewhere that it's possible to do any real research. Now, that may not be true in other areas still. And there may be areas where maybe particularly universities. And I hope there are where it is possible to do actual research. But from what I saw, from what I saw, I thought this is a uh, this is an indoctrination center and there isn't much going on here and uh, it's not possible to do any real research so when i for example came to do my work on the quran a complete revelation i specifically chose not to do it at the university because i knew there wasn't any point and I w- i'm sure i was right about that so uh, i'm just sharing my thoughts on this subject you know you've got to do what you've got to do within within the within the parameters that you're operating in but at the very least i would i would I would advise, I would counsel, I would exhort people to check out what the government is doing to children in the UK, in Scandinavia, all across Europe, in America too, I believe, uh, uh, stealing children, you know, to order. And I know this sounds bizarre. It really does, doesn't it? You can't make this up, but th- this is what's happening. Um, endemic paedophilia and the pushing of an agenda of filth and depravity and um, which is they want your children to be normalized to and that's what school is now set up for now are you all right with that you know if you're going to put it that way are you all right with having your children indoctrinated in that way well i'm not so you have to you know think about ways around it now the way that we've chosen to do it it may evolve over time we may have to move again etc 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 but what the great thing about knowledge and more than knowledge, the ability to think is that you can take it with you. And um, in a way, in a way, people who think in the way that I'm describing are going to become the new Jews uh, persecuted. I mean, I mean, new Jews in the sort of Schindler's list, you know, sort of um, Steven Spielberg kind of way. I don't mean reality, um, but but. People who are going for whom our real capital is going to be what what we know and how we can use what we know, and you know, as a sort of a peculiar people living in a sea of almost um, well, watch Idiocracy if you haven't seen Idiocracy. Uh, it's not a great film, but it's, you know, it'll give you some idea of where we're going. And uh, if you've listened to this far, I think you'll be eminently qualified to, to enjoy it and to, you know, to see the parallels. Um, I hope that helps. It's not really a highly Quranic talk, but it's, I think it's a subject that enough of us are having to wrestle with. And um, I just thought that it was a, a, a timely subject to broach. And I hope everyone's well. And that's all for now. If you're listening on YouTube, you can download my full translation of the Quran free using the button in the top right hand corner or buy the hard copy there at 10% less than on Amazon. 
I also encourage you to sign up for the Quarter Night Plus newsletter on the site to get occasional micro updates. You can download the audio from my YouTube videos to your mobile device using the links in the drop down below. I recommend meetquaranites.com to connect with other Quran alone believers. Like if you like, comment if you have something constructive to say, and subscribe to get more each week. And use the link in the drop down below to donate if you would like to help me keep doing this. And remember, this life is short, eternity is long. If you want good trees, plant good seeds. <laughs>